presidential candidate of uh, APC. Let, let's just look at that, and then we'll come back and um, uh, start with the program and the discussion for today. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu's plane touches down at the airport in Kaduna ahead of the presidential campaign rally. He was accompanied by the governors of Plateau, Kebi, Kano and Jigawa State, and they were received by Governor Nasir Erufai and some chieftains of the party. From the airport, the presidential candidates of the APC quickly embarked on a journey to Beningwari, one of the affected communities by bandit attacks. They journeyed through the deserted villages for hours. On arrival to the palace of the Emir of Beningwari, the monarch appreciated Ashiwaju Tinubu for being the first presidential candidate to have ever visited the community. I welcome you. I welcome Governor Nasir Erufai commended the APC presidential candidate for his fearlessness and doggedness. Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the only presidential candidate to ever, ever come here for campaign. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he didn't come to campaign. He came because he's concerned about what he has read about insecurity in Benangari Emirates. The presidential flag bearer of the ruling party assured the people of Benangari that it will tackle the problems of insecurity. He appealed to them to vote for APC for his administration to be able to fulfill the promise of bringing development to Nigeria. You look left and right on our way down there. We have a great arable land. I want to honor you with the title of Dakaran. The monarch to ban the former governor of Lagos as the Dakaran burning Gwari for his fearlessness and courageous nature. Kaduna State Governor was also to ban. The Emir of Beningwari described Ashiwaju Tinubu as a courageous, fearless, and determined politician who is committed to the growth and welfare of humanity. I cannot remember anybody, any politician candidate who came to Beningwari. But not only that, who was fearless, who came, he said he went to dare. He went to dare with the bandits. And who wants to say, if the road is not good, We'll see and we'll it. A donation of 50 million naira by the APC presidential candidate was announced by the governor of Plateau State and DJ Tinubu Shetima Campaign Council. Ola Awakan, TVC News, Kaduna. All right then. Um, so, um, this morning our guest is um, Mr. Iboro Otu. Uh, Mr. Buru Otu is the governorship candidate in Akwa Ibom State. Uh, he's a member of um, the party that is thought of as, you know, uh, a, a left-wing uh, party. I'll be asking him about that. But the African Action Congress uh, was formed by uh, Mr. Omoyele Shure, publisher of... Uh, you know, Sahara reporters. Uh, uh, good morning to you, sir, Mr. Iboro Otu. Good morning, sir. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about your ambition. Um, uh, uh, everybody who is in the race, of course, is in there to win. And so if you didn't think there was that possibility, of course, you wouldn't be spending time on the project. But that really is my lead in to asking you um, how good do you think your chances are, that is your party's chances, of dislodging um, parties that have considered the place as sort of their political uh, stronghold, uh, from the PDP to the APC, and now African Action Congress uh, would actually take over power at the polls? Um, sorry, sir, I can barely hear you. Maybe you could... Take up your microphone. Party. I wonder what you think about that. But then I also went, to, went on to say that um, uh, I, I'd like your impressions on you know, your chances, or the chances of any party apart from those that are seen as the big parties uh, making headway in Akwa Ibom State. Yes, you are very correct that we are a leftist party. Uh, we are a party of liberals. We, li we believe in uh, our common good. 
And uh, of course, we believe in revolutions as well because we belong to the people. So uh, traditionally, uh, uh, we, we support movements, we support uh, uh, our, um, groups that are made up of uh, common people. And we are very liberal in approach. Innovations are driven by parties and people that are very liberal minded. And as such, uh, when you look at what is happening in my state, for example, and in Nigeria generally, there is a general dissatisfaction with how things are going in this country and in our state, how our commonwealth is being wasted away, how our young people are without jobs and opportunities. And we hope to take advantage of this uh, uh, space to lead our people in the right direction, to tell them, look, there is a big future and we can do great things. Now, when it comes to revolutions, it, it, it does, it, it's not about party, but about people. And uh, now that we are here in a very beautiful time where our electoral laws have been amended a bit to accommodate digitization in the areas of accreditation and transmission of results, we have solved the problem by half. What is now left is vote buying, which is another half. But we believe that in the struggle and in the movement and how we are pushing forward with our agenda, <laughs> we will be able to have a resounding win in Akwaibom State. If you are following what is happening closely in Akwaibom State politically, you will see that most of the political stakeholders are either presently in jail or in courts in many of the major parties. So every day our position gets stronger and better and by God's grace, we will have a very resounding win okay. through uh, the uh, voice of Akwaibom people. Okay, I, I'll take that because you tell me so, and you, you would know best about th that. Um, but I, I wonder, uh, by way of my coming in, um, how important do you think the question of political experience is uh, in, in Nigeria, and in particular for your project in Akwaibom State? Uh, people tend to, you know, think of people of, oh, I, I know him. He has a political pedigree, has a political background, that kind of a thing. Um, I, I don't know uh, how, how you see that particular uh, question. Yeah, but I believe that if you come to Akwaibum State and you ask Akwaibum people about me, they'll give you these answers. I'm not uh, new. I, I hope I'm answering your question. Yes, yes, right, yes, 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 yes. Yes. I have a very strong political background in the state. I have invested a lot in the lives of my people in the state through my NGO and through business. I, uh, of course, in 2019, we ran before and we were illegally excluded from the election petition tribunal because of our, the wealth of our data. And of course, if you remember, we were the ones that went all the way to the international of most of the great countries to ask for this visa ban on uh, 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 leaders in our country. In fact, in countries across Africa that engage in acts of voter repression. And this came to pass. The American government and the British government and the European Union uh, put this ban as a result of the work we did. So uh, I have been around. I believe I have paid uh, the price and the dues. But it's not about the price that I have paid, but what my people want. I believe that those that want to vote for us know us and they see us. We are very visible. We are very audible as well. And mm. in, we are hoping to make sure we convince our people to do right okay. and stop engaging in politics of vote buying and other uh, issues that are at the moment mitigating our progress economically and socially as a people okay. in my state. I, I saw your manifesto, uh, and it's uh, intriguingly called the Lazarus Project. Uh, 2023, the Lazarus Project 2023. That is correct, the uh, Lazarus Project, yes. Yeah, could, could you explain, you know, what led to the name, you know? Uh... So, biblically, Lazarus is the man that Jesus raised from the dead. I'm not saying that we are Jesus, but what we are saying is that our communities, in a quiet room city especially, are almost dead as a result of negligence, as a result of bad governance. And what we are coming to do is reset the game and get our people to take advantage of the great resources we have in this state to move forward. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, it's been all over the media after Governor Wiki raised the issue of missing billions. Our uh, people have been on the streets clamoring for more, you know, uh, explanation to what's happening with the hundreds of billions we've been getting from the 15% derivation. But that's not just the issue. We've received over three trillions over the years, and we have almost nothing to show for it on the ground. So what we are doing at the moment is to rally our support of our people and say, look, we can do great things, and this is the direction we want to go. Okay. Uh, beyond the noise, 
what my people read right, need right now is access to jobs, great education, access to great health care, you know, ability to pay fees for their kids, to feed themselves, and to live without fear mm -hmm. in terms of security. Mm -hmm. And what my manifesto has done is highlight these key areas that we believe that when we invest in them, we would be able to reap benefits immediately. And when, when you look at my manifesto, especially on the last page, you will see the things we want to do in the first 100 days. These are things are called the low-hanging fruits, but also the long projects, looking at what we can do to feed our people, create jobs, 100,000 jobs which we intend to create every year, and then use the internet also to create even more jobs so that the 2.3 million people in the Kwai Bum that are without jobs presently can have opportunity to grow. And the five key priority areas we have, are, which we call haste, which we also intend to move in haste to achieve, is H for healthcare, A for agriculture, S for science and technology, T for tourism, the creative and cultural industries, and E for education. Okay. Now, the, 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 the business of it, even though it's also a service, even though it's predominantly a service to people, is that Nigeria spends $10 billion on food importation. So with the great land we have here in Aquibon, where we do rice plantation, gari, seafood business across the Atlantic, where we have five local governments overseeing, we would be able to take advantage of at least 5% of the $10 billion, and that is a lot. Remember, in medical tourism, we spend $2 billion every year. In educational, uh, foreign education, we spend an additional $1 billion. So by the time we get our primary health care centers, our secondary and tertiary health care centers, centers working, we would be able to provide services for our people, but also people in neighboring states can come in, take advantage of these services and pay and help us generate more IGR. The same with education. We have about 1,250 primary schools and about 251 secondary schools, 80% mm -hmm. of which don't even have fences around them, no blackboards, kids are sitting on the floor, no tables and chairs or roofs. But our plan is to digitize the system not just build in physical infrastructure, but scale our syllabuses and enable our people to plug into the future of the internet. So from primary school, we'll be able to have kids that are using the internet, that are able to code. So we are saying, yes, we have problems right now, but let, let's not follow the noise of the major political parties. Let's look at the big future. Look at the, where the world is going and plug in, and we have the resources in the state to do so. So we have a very ambitious plan, a very strong team. We are a solid party on the ground, and we are doing the work to deliver. All right then. Um, what what informed your uh, choice of uh, Nollywood actress uh, Caroline uh, Uduak uh, Danjuma, that is Chief Mrs. Uh, Caroline Uduak Danjuma, as your running mate? She's a Nollywood actress. What is she bringing? Yes. Uh, uh, what is she bringing into it? Well, the thing is, unfortunately, she's known a lot as as a Nollywood actress, but that is just the last of the, you know, the great uh, uh, um, uh, abilities that she's got. She's a businesswoman doing very well in the area of oil and gas and real estate development there in Lagos. Now, I, I picked her because she's a lover of education. She has a fantastic NGO. She's doing a lot for women, kids, paying school fees, paying hospital bills. Okay. But these things are not being spoken about because people tend to see how much on TV. But most importantly, she is the only uh, person, the only lady I met that has got three master's degrees in different areas, in oil and gas, in law, international law and uh, you know, public relations and all the rest of them. So uh, I said, look, this is a great lady that is doing really well for herself and stands on her own. But then academically, she's at the very top. Mm -hmm. you know, I, all the people that we, we looked at, over 10 of them, she, she came out tops, 10 over 10 all through. So she's a fantastic person. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, because she's known as an actress. Okay. An actress is just a job. You know, a lot of people tend to look at it with some kind of, oh, she, she appears on TV, she dresses a certain way. But, but that is not the issue. The issue is what is the quality of the person and what is she bringing to the table for our people? Would I want my daughter to be like her? Absolutely. All of us would want our daughters to be like her rather than someone else that is not doing well in all the fields are operating in. And what are quite state people and what we need right now are not just leaders that can speak and talk and, and walk, but also those that are exemplary those that can lead the way in their own personal lives. So she's bringing a lot to the table. She's done a lot for the campaign, as you can see. And we are moving together to get a quiet reset from where it is to where we want it to be, which is a great future of where people can have great jobs, can live well, and enjoy the, the benefits of, of where we are in this country today. 
Okay, thank you for that. And uh, re returning to uh, your manifesto, um, a cardinal point there is uh, to uh, run an effective, transparent, and visionary government that is uh, inclusive, uh, that is inclusive and community development based. That's actually the first. Uh, um, that would seem to suggest that that's not the state of affairs right now in Accra Agron State. And I know <laughs> it's not it's very far from that. Uh, speak, speak on that a bit because, um, you, as you know, oh. it's the electorate that is going to make the decision as to whether to buy in to um, what you are saying uh, uh, of this, you know, the state of affairs in Akwai Bomb. When you say, for instance, uh, well, not you, you haven't said it this morning, but it's there. If anybody, get, anybody mm -hmm. gets hold of the fundamental objectives of your, um, uh, of your manifesto, you see there that one of the objectives is to run. Uh, an effective, transparent, and visionary government that is inclusive and community development based. Explain that, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'll, I'll let the people know that my manifesto is available for free. You can download it on our website, iboroutu.com, www. So they can also share in what you are reading. Now, you know, like they say, some sunlight is the best disinfectant. That means that when you run a transparent government, people can vis physically see, and it's visible, how you take in resources and how you spend it, as opposed to what is happening presently in the state. Now, with community development, we've spent most of the years, all through the other past three governments, doing infrastructural projects in the sense that I know you want to start. So they like to build roads, apparently, build bridges, build seaports, build great things, but not build people. Now, my manifesto is about people. That is why when you look at the back page, you will see that the motto there is about developing a Bible community, empowering a Bible communities by empowering a Bible people. So my sense here is we have done enough in whatever infrastructure thing we, call, we term them. It is time to develop people because it is people that build things. So it's great to have this seaport, the Ibom Airlines, and all these great ideas. But it, when you develop the people of the state, they'll be able to have the resources to actually build on these things, to actually get employed, to actually create businesses around these other areas. So what we are doing is look at sectors that can help us create the acquiring state that we want to see. And what's the acquiring we want to see? OK, so 2.3 million people are out of jobs, right? Now, if I am creating 100,000 jobs every year, for eight years, that would be 800,000 jobs. It mm -hmm. would not be enough. Mm -hmm. So what we need a system that can create jobs for all the people and even more. And the internet affords this opportunity. Okay. How can we get people from primary school to secondary schools to have this access? So this is what we are thinking about. So how do we make primary six school leavers and secondary school SS3 leavers to be connected to learning resource centers across the world for free? So free internet everywhere, we broaden uh, we, we deepen broadband penetration. We make access for primary school students by making phones available for over 1 million students that graduate in all through primary, secondary, and university with free data that can connect them to learning resource centers across the world. Now, where will we get the resources to make this happen? In my state, the governor has a security vote of 2 billion naira every month, 24 billion naira a year. That can fund that comfortably. In fact, we... When we trim the government of acquiring we say alone, we will save over 100 billion naira. What, 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 sorry, 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 sir. When, when you say that, that um, you know, the governor gets a security vote of 2 billion every month, um, if, yes. you, if you were to be elected and that was to come to you, as it says, it's security vote. Um, but did you, just, oh, yes. did you just suggest that you would actually <laughs> expend it on something else? And what if you need the funds that uh, security votes were meant for? Not that very many Nigerians actually know what security mo votes uh, is supposed to be uh, doing. We, we know how security votes are being used in the state, sir. And we will not use it that way. We will use it to empower our people. Like the private jets we pre presently have for our governor, that immediately from the one we get into office starts getting in the market. We don't need that. The governor lodges we have, the governor's lodge we have all across the states in Nigeria, we will turn them to hospitals so that they can actually be generating money for the state. Instead of staying idle, we are paying for diesel and petrol, and when the governor goes to Lagos, they don't even stay in the lodges. So we have great plans that will help us stream government and make resources available to be used in other areas I've mentioned. 
Again, when you look at the budget for 2023, you see that the Accountant General's Office has a budget that's bigger than the budget of education, healthcare, and agriculture combined, over 50-something billion. Now, what happens in the Accountant General's Office that demands 50-something billion expenditure? Nothing but buying of cars, maintaining of the private jet. We will do away with all those. Then, uh, you go to the Special Duties Ministry, it's the same issue. Different line items that are very vague and are used to, you know, as loopholes to steal money, to be honest, in using the crudest, crudest, crudest of words. So what we intend to do is to trim the government, make it make sure that as the, the 50 car motorcade is reduced to five, and plug in these monies in the areas of healthcare, agriculture, science and technology to enable our people have the required strength to compete globally take advantage of jobs that are available across the world, which I am taking advantage of right now, and then, you know, be able to make money, generate more money for the state, and, and make us, you know, compete and live very well because we have the resources in this state that is bigger than the resources of 60% of countries in West Africa. Mm. There is no reason why a quiet state should, be, should have a 77% poverty index. Unemployment in this state is the highest in the country at 55%. Now, the inflation rate in this country is about at 20%. When you add 55 to 20, it gives you 75%, which gives you the misery index of the people. We shouldn't be in misery in a quiet state when we have the second largest uh, uh, petroleum reserve and number one in, in, in the gas reserve in this country, with a huge 13% derivation from coming in, plus the other funds that are coming into the state every month. But beyond that, there are many opportunities, grants from different organizations, whether it's in the healthcare sector through the Gavi Fund, the educational sector through the Bill and Melinda Gates, many foundations that are ready to support our system if we are transparent and accountable. So what we are coming in to do is to reset this system, to tell Aquaibum people, look, this is where our resources are and this is how we intend to use it and we are doing so from day one. What is the population figure that you're working with for uh, Aquaibum State? Six million, sir. It's, it's a state of six million citizens. Um, that, that is correct. That, so, well, I imagine that will make it a, a bit more uh, manageable uh, than, you know, perhaps other states, given a scarcity of resources. Maybe that, uh, I don't know whether to launch into the other question I wanted to ask or whether I should go on a break so that I don't have to interrupt you once you begin. In fact, I, I think I'll go on a break. So please bear with us. We'll be right back. Okay, sir. Thank you. Politics is defined as getting what, where, when, and how. But in the mix, many things come to play to shape the political fortune of any country. From the political actors to the electorate, campaign to voting, from debates to policy decisions, big events happen to engage us in constant conversation. That's what we're looking for. Not some people are talking about ethnicity. No. Who is your mind? Don't worry. Join me every day on Politics Tonight, where we dissect issues that shape our political destiny. Politics Tonight, weekdays on TVC News. In the month of December, on the 1st, it is World AIDS Day. On the 3rd, attention shifts to persons living with disabilities. And December 9th is dedicated to International Anti-Corruption Day. 10th is Human Rights Day, while the 11th is the second anniversary of the abduction of over 300 students in Kankara, Katsina State. On the 12th of December, the World Health Organization dedicates the day as Universal Health Coverage Day. On the 17th of December, the abducted Kankara boys were freed six days after. 18th of December is set aside as International Migrants Day. It is the last month of the year. Brace yourself for an interesting December. Stay with TVC News.
Okay, uh, welcome back. And uh, our guest is Mr. Iboro Otu. He's the uh, governorship candidate of African Action Congress in Akwa Ibom State. He's explained to us uh, what they mean, when, what is what is meant when it is referred to as a left-wing political party, having been created by uh, uh, Mr. Moyele Shoure, um, you know, who was the founder, uh, and I believe presidential candidate as well. Yeah, of the party. Uh, now, Mr. Iboro would run the affairs of the six million citizens of Akwa Ibom State. Uh, for the better if he gets the chance. And we're looking at um, what indeed um, his um, projections are. He's spoken about some of them, but then I also noticed this one, which is to strengthen uh, the uh, socio-economic base uh, of the state. And I think allied to, allied to that is uh, what is referred to here as revitalizing the God-given entrepreneurial uh, zeal in every Akwai bomb citizen. Uh, could you explain those two? Because they seem to me to be related. To be related, but if I'm mistaken, please go ahead and correct me. Yes, you you are very correct. Uh, Akwai bomb people are indeed very entrepreneurial, especially in the in the in the agri sector. Uh, but we don't have the ecosystem support at the moment to enable our people scale commercially. And uh, what? we intend to do is what I understood in Taiwan, which is the one family, one business uh, approach. Now, I, I understood it. Uh, I went to Taiwan for so many things. One is because um, Obama Victor, the former governor of Akwai Ibom State, had started a project called the Ibom Science Park, which he borrowed from the Taiwan Science Park. So I went to and studied that, plus other things. And as such, I, I lived in Taiwan for three months. So what we intend to do is do what the Taiwan is doing. Every household, every family has a business attached to it. So no matter how small it is, they together come to make a very big hole. And that's why Taiwan is where it is today, why everyone is looking at it as a jewel. Now, when we take advantage of the science park and the very great digital knowledge here in Akwai State, we would be able to have, to, I mean, presently, I mean, com uh, I mean, uh, discussions with the Taiwanese government to the embassy here, to the, uh, the, the consulate in, in Lagos, to see how we can create a, a, a system where we can help in the tech sector, in making the little uh, uh, productions in, in headphones, in phone chargers, and all the rest of them. Through our science park here in Akwaibum State that we are working on, we, we, want, we intend to actualize the vision of Obon Victor from day one. So we have the great 18-story uh, uh, building that has been built that is presently empty. We have the e-library that is presently empty, which we could put to work immediately to make available space for over 200,000 Akwaibum young people to come in, develop their requisite skills in the tech sector, and also encourage young people across Africa or, or, as a destination of choice in terms of uh, tech. Okay. So these great plans, while also taking advantage of our MSMEs, remember, China is built up of cooperatives. So we will put in place a, a youth development fund of about uh, um, 310 billion naira, which is about 10 billion naira per local government. Mm. The government, we will seed it with 31 billion from day one so that partners can come in and help this grow. So that our cooperatives, our women in the markets, our brothers in the agri sector who are struggling hard to buy, to have 6 million to buy speed boats, will be able to have access to these funds. Remember, most of the seafood come from here, but because the businesses are owned by foreigners, we end up having seafood more expensive in the market here in Rio than it is in Adamawa, for example. Why? Because if, when these, our young people that are experienced go in the seas and bring this seafood, the guys just take it outside to sell. We want to reverse this trend so that we can feed our people properly and also help our people control this great ecosystem that God has given us. So we have these great plans to support our people, localize the economy, broaden the space in terms of uh, uh, funding penetration. So our quite of young people can be very energized and can get the resources they need. And remember, when young people have money, they spend it. And when they spend it, the economy becomes robust. And when the economy is robust, we no more enter private just like the present governor is doing, flying overseas to look for investors who don't come. But the investors will see the activity practically happening in Akwai Bumstead and come in to say, look, what's happening here? How can we plug in? See, the resources of the world today as it is, note, 
knows where things are happening. You don't need to go. America does not come here to sell the American market. We go there to buy. So because we know something is happening in America, we want the world to know that, look, Akwai said is the next place that you don't want to miss out on. And we are ready to do it from day one, okay. underpinning all these areas through technology to make sure that we can, you know, tokenize our economy, meaning we don't just localize it. The whole world can see what's happening here and can come in and take a bit okay. of a bite, okay. thus empowering this state and country. Thank you, Mr. Ochu. Um, we have a, our first caller. Uh, Mazi Okoroafo has called him from Arochuku and uh, has an observation, comment, or question. Good morning, Mazi. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, our governorship aspirant, Ochu. Now, Ochu, you know, uh, Arochuku and Akwaibom, the difference is uh, from Ikono local government, it's uh, in Kana Bridge. And Kana Bridge, as you rightly said, about the CC. That river, that's in Canada, that river, you know what happened at least. Thank God for the President of they have built that bridge. And a lot of... It, it fell a long time ago. Now, what I'm going yeah. to find out now, if you go around and see that there are a lot of out-of-school students, and the youth there, they are doing well. But many of them, they don't have the opportunity of going to school. Better for school fees come there, many of them will be sent back. But when school is in the church? So, what are your own plans to make sure that people from primary... Nursery, junior, secondary, senior, secondary will go to school. At least get their HSC where possible, write their HSC. At least their parents can take care of that one. So, how will you solve that problem? And you know, very well from Nkana to Arutuku, you, you, you can walk in where you cross that bridge, either that uh, Arutuku is not far. And you see that many people are always on bike, 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 bike. And the risk involved is too much. How do you think about the youth? Thank you very much, Mazu Krafu, from Arjuku, your neighbor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mazi, uh, especially for the question, because you took it right out of my mouth. I was going to ask yes. Mr. Otu next um, what, he, what, what is meant by AAC when they talk about securing the future of youths, you know, under an AAC administration. I think it's related to Mazi Okorafo's question. That, that is very correct. And like I said, education is number one priority for our government. That's why we are allocating 10% of our capital expenditure in that area. Not only allocation of that budget, really, but release of funds as well. Like I said earlier on, that most of the primary, 80% of our primary and secondary schools have no roofs in them. I mean, infrastructure-wise, no tables, no chairs. And what Maz is saying is true, even though the government might be saying otherwise. And I can tell you, if you Google Premium Times, for example, or the male newspapers are quite blue state, there's been extensive investigations done in this area. So I have a great team of people who can identify how we plug in these resources. And I can say right now that, like I said, our primary schools will not just have the right infrastructure, but scaling of syllabuses. It's not just about building schools and fences. It's about upgrading the syllabuses, empowering our teachers through the teacher training colleges, incentivizing education so the right intelligent people can actually come in and train our people. And beyond training, like I said, all primary school students from primary six as they graduate, even though they are learning, even though they will also be learning coding and getting on the computer all through school, we will be giving them access to free phones that is being paid for by the state, connected to the internet for free, so that they can connect to the world and continue their education. Remember, not everyone, like Marcy said, will be going to school, even though most will go to for vocational training. A lot of people will be learning online through YouTube. A lot of education happening today on the internet. So we want to give our people this opportunity to connect to the world from primary one. And when we do this, like I have said, we would have taken care of a millions of young people that will be coming in to and help them to easily connect to the world than it is today. Um, you know, I, I like what you just said, but I, I want to try and put it in context. Uh, in terms of out-of-school children, you've told us earlier that we're looking at a six million population, uh, of which um, uh, you will know better than me uh, the percentage of school children and how many of those are out of school so that I can relate it to what you've just finished saying. So the numbers are neither here nor there because of the data. But there are thousands of out-of-school children that in percentage is up to 30% of the percentage that is in school right now. And uh, like I said, Ekimini Simon has done extensive work on that. If you Google, you'll get the exact number. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we intend to do 
is to get the kids back into school. Of course, right now there is a, a free education for that purpose. But the truth is, it is not quality education. So with us coming in with quality free education, we'll be able to arrest this. And even at that, um, when you go through the re report, like I said, you'll see that most of these kids still pay. The, the, the government has failed to pay the 100 Naira per kid in primary schools every time, which is nothing. Like, it's not even up to 100 million across all the 1,250 primary schools, for example. There are some uh, payments that the government is supposed to do to make to run these schools. And as a result of the failure to do so, the schools still go back to the parents of these kids to make these payments who are unable to afford them. And the kids are, again, in the street. So we will make sure we tackle this comprehensively and uh, bring these kids back to school because the problems of tomorrow because by kids that don't have opportunities like every other kid in the world. Okay. And uh, we, we have a very comprehensive package for education All right, in then. the state for the people and even for other people that are living around Aquarium State to come and take advantage of our educational system at secondary and tertiary level so that we all can have more resources to plug into our educational system. And with the 10% of capital expenditure allocated to this area, we would have had enough seed funding to start the process. All right. Let me bring in Mr. Mohammed now, calling in from Offa in Kwara State. Good morning to you, Good morning. Mr. Mohammed. Good, Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please go Good ahead. Morning. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, my name is Raji Mohammed, calling from Offa, Kwara State. Okay. Um, I want to ask the governor's candidate a side question because he has mentioned the health sector, the education sector the education sector. What about the plan on internal security, the security of rights and property of acquired people? Because he has a very good self in terms of health, education. Yep. What about security? Yep. Internal security. All right, then. Thank you very yeah, much for right. that question. Because, I don't know, my, uh, viewers are mind readers this morning. I was going to ask Mr. Otu what the security situation is like in Aqua Ibom. Most of Nigeria has a challenge with that. What's the situation like in there? And um, how do you intend to uh, engage with it? So, uh, we have security challenges here as well. But it's not as bad as it is in the other parts of the country, especially in the north. But there's a lot of restiveness, youth restiveness, will, and it's a direct result of unemployment levels and lack of, you know, access to support systems. So, um, uh, when you again, when you look at the last page of my manifesto, I have highlighted things we intend to do in the first 100 days, and one of them is the security uh, uh, system, where we would be putting together the, uh, the community security network, where the, the, the local government chairman which, again, when you look at the things we want to do in the first 100 days, local government autonomy is involved, will be empowered to work with the chiefs, the clan heads, to, to enable uh, um, young people and vigilantes secure our communities. But, but again, since young people predominantly operate in this sector, with uh, our youth development fund, where we would be able to create opportunities for young people to plug in and have access to support networks and systems that enable them grow businesses. We would have solved half of the problem. But then the community knows who comes in, which foreigner comes in, where they stay, how they go. Apart from the big terrorist activities, the local thieving and robbery, kidnapping, we'd be able to arrest them through this community security network we intend to put to play as, as a government. And this is in the first 100 days when we get into office. So we have a, a solid security plan for our people that will be run by our people so that businesses can, can thrive. Indeed. And uh, because I, I was just seeing uh, here that um, you have um, a vast experience, apart from political activism, uh, vast international and local business experience in the areas of agriculture and agro-allied industries, uh, including uh, media and uh, construction. So uh, quite a varied, uh, you know, past. But um, I, I'm assuming that um, all of that is going to have to, when, when you become the governor, should the electorate decide so, all of that will have to be to one side. Uh, uh, you know, because to, to concentrate on governance. But how would you bring this to bear, uh, especially, you know, uh, the agriculture and agro-allied uh, aspects? 
So uh, uh, presently, one of the big companies I'm working with, Ethos, is doing a great job here in, in, in Nigeria, even in acquiring safe, especially in, in, in with regards to uh, uh, agro machinery importation and sales, and you know, working with governments to develop uh, agro projects across the country. Um, but beyond what I intend to do with people I know is what I intend to do with acquiring people. So we, I have a very strong team of experts in different fields. When you look at tech, for example, I, I'll tell you the vice president of Facebook is from Aquaibum State, Ime Achibong. Okay. And uh, most of the big corporations in the world, the vice president of the biggest bank in the world, JP Morgan, is from Aquaibum State. The vice president of the second biggest security company in the world is from Ikotekan in Aquaibum State, the neighborhood of Winter. The vice president of uh, the, the second, the, the biggest bank in Africa, uh, Standard Chapter, is from Aquaibum State. I can keep counting to you Aquaibum people that are doing well globally in top 10 companies in the world. So what we intend to do is to bring, make this connection, this lasting connection between our people across the world and what's happening here in the center. What normally happens is these people come in, but they can't engage the system because of how the system is being run. The system is not transparent. It's about who know who and the networks that you have. But when we digitize and transparently open up our government to the rest of the world, not just foreign investors will be coming in, but our own investors coming from different parts of the world to take advantage of their God-given land and opportunities. So I know a vast number of people. I can tell you right now we are running as a shadow government, what you see and hear about in the UK. We want to hit the ground running when we get into office. So we are assuming our position today, building teams today, telling people, look, what will we do in this sector and who can do it? And I can tell you we have identified great people. Just like you said, you asked me how I identified my deputy governor. I can tell you I identified 10 people like her and had to, and we had to go through a rigorous process to be able to pick one. Okay. I believe we have great people in this country. It's just that the system of politics that we have, which is underpinned by Godfatherism, makes it impossible for leaders to come in and engage because they have to pay back to their godfathers. This is the advantage of working with AAC, Godfather no day. We struggle, and that's why we are calling on Nigerians and acquiring people to support our campaign. This campaign is people-based. There's okay. nobody anywhere in the country that's supporting us. We are running our thing on our own, creating the networks, making our people believe that things can change and will change. That, look, as much as we have very bad people and very bad systems in Nigeria, it's not just the Nigerians generally. It's just certain people. We also have very particular gain from our commonwealth. All so right, I, I, I trust in God. I trust in Nigerians. I trust in Aquaibu Mines. I know that we will have the opportunity, and when we do, we will deliver. Okay, quite interesting. And um, as, you know, Mr. Um, Otu said at the top, um, the manifesto of AAC, his manifesto uh, in uh, Aquaibu State is available online. Um, the Lazarus Project 2023, he said. It's a 46-page document. Uh, thank you very much for calling in, uh, Mr. Um, I have someone else. www.eboro.com. That's oh. where you can find it. Indeed. Um, Mr. Obot in Lagos has called in. Good morning yes. to you, sir. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, we, we did lose uh, Mr. Uh, Obot, who had called in from uh, Lagos. Um, the other thing, of course, and, you know, let, let's, let, let's go to it. Well, first of all, in, in terms of trying to understand, um, you know, you know the, the, this particular ticket, uh, I had asked you about your deputy, and you had explained a bit about it. Um, you said that uh, it's probably not fair that um, she is often seen as a Nollywood uh, actress uh, because that is one of her... Uh, talents and capabilities, but I would dare say that um, just looking at your manifesto, she had a, she has excelled uh, in that uh, area herself. But you know, um, mm. I'm, I'm 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 looking at it now, and um, I'm seeing that um, she has a business uh, in construction, real estate, oil and gas, agricultural company mm. as well. That is and, correct. You know, so there's a, there's a heck of a lot. Um, maybe just acting is one of our talents, and you know, it there's, it seems to be a trend for um, yeah, entertainers, uh, people coming from the entertainment sector to be coming into politics, which is uh, not at all strange. You, you, people probably remember well that there are 
you know, uh, uh, people in the media, people in entertainment uh, who have come into high office. Uh, President Ronald Reagan comes to mind, for example. Uh, there's quite a number of people, if you could just Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, do, Donald Trump has been a business person. Well, even entertainment, you're very, very right. Uh, entertainment, you, you know. So, so I just, uh, it's 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 this trend, this increasing trend, uh, uh, we remember, uh, among others, Funke Akindele in Lagos for another party. Uh, is it because of the popularity that these people have that you thought she might be a good choice? Uh, it might have been a he, uh, but two things you've done there. You brought someone in from outside of core politics, and um, also she's a lady. Is that in keeping with your attitude to governance, uh, making sure that women are carried yes. along? I love, I love this question. Thank you for asking it. Yes, our women, they have really been disenfranchised. Uh, like, I, I agree with my deputy governor. Our, our uh, government would be made up of 50% men and 50% women, of course, because when you empower the woman, you empower the family and you empower the community. But unfortunately, the reverse has been the case. And she wasn't picked as a result of... Maybe it is a generational thing. So... We, uh, I think the signal dropped, but in the meantime, uh, Mr. Okuk in Ojo has called in. Let's see if by the end of your question, we'd have got a signal back. Good morning to you, Mr. Okuk. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Thank you for calling in. My name is Okuk. I'm calling from Ojo. That is in Lagos State. Yes. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. Um, Mr. Yuri, I'm very happy uh, to be in this program this morning. I, I am from Aquaibom State. I'm an Aquaibomite. Uh, I have a question for the uh, governorship candidate in uh, Aquaibom State. Um, my question is uh, that in, in, in respect of youth, but because when you look at the, the situation in uh, Aquaibom State, the youth empowerment program, there has been a lot of signs uh, um, that they, they say, yeah, they want to empower youth. Because we have a very creative youth in Aquaibom State. How are you going to make sure that you go, you align your government with youth? That is number one question. Number two question is like those uh, areas, those um, those interior communities, those interior villages, low government that mm. the government of Aquaibom State haven't touched for so many years. Places like the Kalu government precisely. If you go to the Kalu government, there's no good road network. There's no electricity, no good electricity, no electricity. In fact, since I've been in that Kalu government, I've never seen light in that Kalu government. How are you going Correct. to bring your government Correct. down to the Kalu government? Okay. Another question is... Well, well you, you, you can't do those questions. Uh, sorry, sir. You can't do those multiple questions. I'm so sorry. And uh, I want to thank you very much, though, for, for calling in. Um, he's... he's in fact, I, I'm, I, we're having challenges staying connected with Mr. Otri. Okay. Well, so, sorry, sorry, sir. That's it. That's it. Um, you've addressed an area of interest of his, which was youth development. Yes. Uh, you've addressed that. Yes. But, but, but then he talked about inter the interior, the interior, the non-urban areas. But I can see right there on the screen that we're having challenges maintaining this connection. If you can hear me, see what you can do in the next... 30 seconds, yes, perhaps. 30 seconds, because we've got to go now. Did you want to relate with oh, rural yes, yes, areas of Aquaibom State? Uh, no. Uh, well, it's... Uh, we, Hello? We, I can... Yeah. Would you quickly like to say something about um, the in, uh, rural areas, which is a question that Mr. Cook brought up. Uh, he also brought up other questions, but you've addressed them about youth empowerment. He, he was concerned about the interior, and I hope you're not concentrating essentially on the urban areas. As short as possible, please. He's, he's very correct. So he's talking about the Ika, Okanafo, Norogonam area, Abako, and all the rest of them. Okay. Uh, the, the, the problem is the skewed uh, a budgetary system that is presently available. If you look at the 2023 Aquaibom budget for capital allocation across local governments, you know, you see that your local government, for example, will have 93 billion. 
in this Uyo senatorial district, mm -hmm. and all the other local governments combined will have less than five. In oh, fact, okay. in the I, I, local I'm government very area, sorry, Mr. Um, Otu. The, 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 Mr. Otu, please forgive me. I, I yes. really hate to do this, but we've completely run out of time. However, it's been an exciting time with you, Mr. Iboro Otu. Uh, African uh, Action Congress uh, governorship candidate in Aqua uh, Bomb State, alongside his uh, running mate, uh, Chief Mrs. Caroline Uduaka Danjuba. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Otu. Okay, that's our program today. Then please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye bye for now. So we are calling on our security agencies to kindly allow people to move.